Welcome to The Real News Network, coming to you today from Washington, D.C. Joining us now is Bob Poland. Bob is a professor of economics, founding co-director of the Political Economy Research Institute, the Perry Institute, at the University of Massachusetts, Amherst. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. We've talked in previous interviews about stimulus and how it affects the economy. And for those of you that haven't seen those interviews, just do a search on our site for Bob Poland, and you'll, you'll find them. Uh, the, the, one of the big issues about stimulus and government expenditure is the debate over military expenditure. And uh, you know, people say that World War II helped get you know, America out of the 1930s. Mm -hmm. So forget the kind of moral issues, ethical issues, or issues of international law. This expansion into Afghanistan may have some kind of stimula stimulus effect in the American economy, and maybe that ain't so bad. And the whole military industrial complex Maybe that ain't so bad because it is a way of, of stimulus. What's your take on this? Well, it is an important debate because, of course, given the current severe recession, people look back to the 30s and what got us out of the Depression. And it's very clear that for the whole decade of the 1930s, we had a lot of social programs aimed to stimulate the economy, the Works Project Administration, Civilian Conservation Board, et cetera. And they conducted those through the 30s, and they didn't really get us out of the uh, Depression. And then World War II hits, and we go from 13% to 2% unemployment within a year. So the story is war is the answer to depression. And then part of the right-wing critique is the other piece of that story is, and government stimulus to create jobs is not. And government stimulus on anything other than war is not. Now, that's, that's not the crux of the matter. The real crux of the matter is that it was government deficit spending, borrowing money and spending, injecting that into the economy that got us out of the 1930s depression. And it was only that the, the war was the only thing that had the political support to raise the level of deficit spending necessary to overcome the depression. So you're saying it's not a it's a quantitative issue. It's the amount of deficit spending exactly. on the war yeah. as compared to relatively little on job stimulus. That's, That's right. the real story. That's the real story and in fact, I mean if you actually add up military spending versus domestic spending comparing dollar for dollar, a million dollars on the military versus a million dollars in education or clean energy, military spending is actually a bad job stimulus. Education, clean energy, healthcare, those are much more effective as a job stimulus. The only issue is politically whether we can move enough money into those areas to become effective sources of new job creation. So how do you know that? Okay, this is research that I've done based on U.S. statistics from the Department of Commerce. Using the input-output model from the Department of Commerce, what we basically find is as follows, that if you spend a million dollars on the military, you create 12 jobs. If you spend a million dollars on clean energy, you create 17 jobs. If you spend a million dollars on health care, you create 20 jobs. If you spend a million dollars on education, you create 29 jobs. So why? Get, get into the actual nitty-gritty right, of this. Right. So why is that the case? And okay. How do you, how do you justify Okay, so there's that? basically two factors going on here. Number one is how much money you spend domestically versus how much you spend abroad. Obviously, military spending has a high proportion of spending abroad, and that's not going to create jobs in the U.S. These other areas that I mentioned, education, healthcare, clean energy, are much more focused on the domestic economy. But, but isn't most of abroad still American weapons produced here, uh, food supplies and little packages produced here? Yeah, there is. But still, when you're sending checks, for example, to soldiers abroad or you're, you're building Camp Victory in Iraq, uh, that's work that's being done in Iraq, and that there's a lot of money doing that. Or and something like a thousand military bases around the world. Yeah, or Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. Whatever we might think about it in political terms, as an economic phenomenon, it's happening in Afghanistan and Pakistan. So in terms of job creation, that's sucking uh, money out of the U.S. where you could be creating jobs here. And the second factor is 
what we economists call labor intensity, which is the relative amount when you spend a million dollars, the relative amount that goes to hiring people versus spending on machine, on land, uh, on transportation, on energy. And uh, so uh, investing in education, investing in healthcare, and investing in building a new clean energy economy entail much more use of people and rely less on these other costs. How, how does the, I, I don't know if you call it a ripple effect, but you know, so I, I've heard it talked about in domestic economy, if you spend this dollar, you get more of a ripple than a military dollar. Yeah, exactly. It's that, not just the foreign factor. What else is it? There are two kinds of ripples. So number one, if we're going to, say, hire people to be in a school, or if we're going to retrofit a building, we, first of all, have to hire people, uh, other people in the school, not just teachers. We have to hire uh, people in the front office. We have to hire people serving lunch. We have to hire bus drivers. Then we, that's, that's one set. We also have to uh, buy new books. So that provides employment for people working for the book publishers. Then there's people that, all those people that newly have jobs also have money in their pockets. They spend it. And they, in their communities, that stimulates markets and stimulates activity in their community. So those are the ripple effects. And those ripple effects are very important and they're bigger the more concentrated you are in a, in the domestic co co uh, economy, communities, versus having the money go out. Now, part of the issue of, of war, especially these days, it's not about, they're not selling it based on the economic stimulus. They're based selling it on national security threat, right, terrorism. Right. Sure. So in terms of the uh, decision people have to make, it's not just an economic decision. No, here. of course not. It's, it's not an economic decision yet, in the debate around the Pentagon budget, for example, the, the, the job issues became central. And in fact, the rhetoric was, we can't possibly cut this weapons program because it's so important for jobs. Now, okay, we did cut- Which, which goes to this idea of why they produce parts for uh, in all an airplane the states, in 50 states, so yeah, everybody's yeah, got yeah, something yeah, in yeah. it. Yeah, just a coincidence. No, of course, it's because we can create jobs in all these states. And that's true. If you spend a million dollars, a billion dollars, a hundred billion dollars on anything, if anybody spends it, you will create jobs. The question, the real relevant metric is how many jobs relatively from one activity versus another. And militarism is a bad source of job creation. These other areas are much stronger as sources of job creation. Yeah, you've seen this in the fight over the F-22. The ads from the manufacturer were all about jobs. It wasn't that we need this plane to fight wars. It was all about employment. That's right. So the F-22 got cut, but the F-34 uh, was strengthened. There was no change in the overall budget. And my own senators, I mean, Kerry, Senator Kerry, li supposedly liberal senator from Massachusetts, voted for the, he cut the F-22, expanded the F-34. Why? Because he said we need the jobs in Massachusetts. What we really need are jobs in uh, more effective ways. If you put the money into the educational system, into building a clean energy economy, we'd have more jobs. So it goes back to your first point. When you have the rationale of fighting terrorism and you have the kind of great moral support for war, then you can get your economic benefits justified through that way. But you can't get now the political support for straightforward uh, infrastructure spending. Right. I mean, the point is, politically, uh, the military uh, story is we need this to fight terrorism, and it's great for jobs. We can d debate whether it's great for fighting terrorism. I can tell you flat out that it's not great for jobs. It's bad for jobs relative to other ways of spending the same amount of money. Well, so in the next segment of our interview, let's talk about this argument that wide-scale, large militarization has been one of the driving forces of this successful American economy, both in terms of innovation and on other fronts. So please join us for the next segment of our interview with Bob Poland.